Well, hey everyone, Andy Sirwich here from Altera Software, coming to you again from Microsoft Ignite in Orlando, Florida. And I'm really excited about this particular interview. I managed to track down Jeffrey Snover here at the conference. How's it going, Jeffrey? It's going fantastic. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. It's really exciting to talk to you. I know you've worked on a variety, a vast variety of things at Microsoft. So it's definitely exciting to uh, to get a chance to talk. So, so I guess first off, because we're at Ignite, you know, how are you liking the conference so far? What's your what's your favorite announcement that's come out of this conference so far this week? Well, it's hard to say. Of course, Ignite's always one of my favorite conferences of the year. So great to talk to all the customers. Actually, my favorite part of Ignite is is talking to the customers. Right. So, but my favorite announcement, you know, so there's been so many, but I think uh, Azure Arc. Yes. So actually, we've been working on that for quite some time. You know, trying to figure out it's a hard task. Yes. Basically, taking the Azure um, extension, the Azure uh, namespace, and extending it to on-premises right. and other clouds. I think that's so exciting from yes. both a technology standpoint, but then also a, pers uh, a value perspective, right? So right. I don't know if I ever told you the joke, the uh, there's this joke that says, "Oh, an admin." Wrote a, had a problem, so he wrote a Perl script. Then he had two problems. <laughs> so that also applies yep. to like managing products. A company had a product, so a problem, managing problem. So then they bought System Center, and then they had two managing problems. <laughs> Indeed, so many customers have like put these entire organizations right. around the managing tools, right. and it's so heavy and so hard. That's one of the great joys of the cloud. Is like oh. I can just click a button and get all this management right, tools right. for the things in the cloud. <laughs> right. And now you can get all that great management for the things in the cloud and on stuff on premises or on somebody else's cloud. And so I just love the value yeah. proposition. Help, we're all about helping customers focus in on the things that make them the day and only they can do. Right, definitely. You know, I, I spent a lot of years in the trenches doing infrastructure work. Yeah. If I put that hat back on, I'm like, okay, single pane of glass to manage all my workloads, wherever they are, where do I sign? Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah, definitely. So I was excited to see that announcement as well. So, well, you know, the community knows you as the PowerShell guy, yes. right? But I know that's not what you're working on these days. Um, what have you been working on lately that you can share with us? Yeah, by the way, I was also one of the chief architect yeah. of Windows Server. It yeah. kind of frustrates me a little. Like, that's a job you, you, you put on the front of your tombstone, right? On the back, you're like, loving father and husband, whatever. <laughs> it's like, we've had three chief architects of Windows Server. Dave freaking Cutler, Bill Lang, and then somehow I end up on Jeffrey that list. Snover. And I'm like so proud of that nobody ever asked me about it. Anyway, <laughs> there's like this cult of personality around PowerShell, right? And everybody's like, oh, it's Windows Server. It's true. Well, you know, I didn't invent Windows Server, so maybe that's part of it. Anyway, so now I'm working in Office. Can you believe that? Yeah. Office. Yeah. And <laughs> platform guy working in Office. And so I'm focusing on the in AI layer in Office, what we call okay. the intelligent substrate. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about what the intelligent substrate is? Yeah. So basically in, in Office, uh, Office 365, Everything, everything gets stored either primarily in this storage layer we call the substrate or has a digital twin in the substrate. And then that allows us to provide common set of promises, durability, availability, privacy, security. Okay. And then we build services on top of that. And one of the services is search. So you get a common search, search for a term, you find it in all your teams, your Outlook, your, your documents, your SharePoint files. Which they demoed <clears throat> yesterday at the keynote. Indeed. It's really cool. Very cool. Yep. And then we're building an AI layer on top of that. So make you know empower data scientists to go experiment, and then when they figure out a good feature, then deploy that inferencing uh, across uh, all the tenants. That's really cool. Yeah, a lot of the AI stuff in Office 365, you know, I feel like it's it's some of that stuff that you don't realize you want it until you see it. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, I have to have that, you know. And I mean, you know, personally, one of the use cases I saw yesterday was, you know, you're going to get, going into a meeting with somebody, and oh, here are the recent documents that you've shared with this person. Exactly. And I mean, like all the time, I'm trying to keep track of where are my documents that I've been collaborating on with this person. That's just. Just one of those small, it seems like a small thing, but it's such a, such a time saver. Absolutely. By the way, you got the gestalt of AI exactly correct, right? Yep. So a lot of people think, well, AI is just going to be some like some fireworks, some big flashing <laughs> stuff, etc. Right. So there's this one this movie, uh, I think it's called The End of the Day. End of the Day, End of the Day. Anyway, it was Anthony Hopkins was a butler. And in researching the role, right, but he's a fantastic British butler. He researching the role, he talked to the butler at Buckingham Palace who had done that job for 50 years. Oh, wow. 
and he said, the essence of a great butler is that a butler will make the room empty, emptier when he enters it. <laughs> it says, there's just less there. Right. Right. And so when someone needs something, it just appears. Right. You don't have to ask for it, it just appears. Right. When they go to sit down, it's properly configured the way they wanted it to <laughs> without them thinking about it. And so that's the way I think about AI. AI, look, so right now, right, we've all heard this, right? Oh, you know, Microsoft ships its org chart, right? Right. So often what that means is like, you have to understand Microsoft's tools and sometimes our org chart in order for you to get your job done. Right. Well, with AI, what I'm trying to do, what we're trying to do is to flip that on its head. We're trying to understand you, the tools are trying to understand you to help you get your job done. Right. Okay, so that's that thing, like, oh, well, I know you have this meeting coming up. By the way, here's, it's like the butler. Oh, you're gonna sit in this right. chair, you're gonna want this version of the, your version, your magazine here, and you like your drink there, and they're just there. <laughs> right. I'm going to this meeting. Oh, I gotta prep for that meeting. Here's the documents that you've been working on with these people. Here's an email that you haven't had. So just make things easier and flow. And so there should be less of this like frustration. Right. Uh, and, and by the way, so the reason why this is so cool is it gives you more energy. Yeah, right? right. So often, I mean, how many times have you ended the day and you're just like exhausted? I need to and go you, sleep you right now. Your spouse asks you, <laughs> right. what'd you do today? You're like, I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> yep. And part of that is because there's so much friction. Like, you, you know, uh, I gotta get this done. And like, how do I do this? And you know, for me, like the fuses pop. Yep. And, and if we could just like, no, here's what happens. Here's what happens next. Oh, what happened? So somebody said something in a meeting you didn't quite catch. Oh, we transcribed it. You can search the transcript, find it, replay that portion of the meeting. Like, oh, that's what they said. Right. Right. Just about making life easier, which is fantastic. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's kind of a nice segue into my next question. You know, on top of what we've just talked about, how is AI going to change the way that we use Office 365 in the future? I'm guessing more along the lines of what we've been talking about. Is, yeah. is there is there more? Well, over and also, you know, part of this is that kind of flow I mentioned. Great. But then also how you interact with it. So we're actually the industry and we, Microsoft, part of that, uh, are making you know sort of revolutionary advances in natural language understanding. Right. Right. So right now, you already know how to go into a search bar and say, you know, for mail from colon Jeffrey Snow. Right? right. Right. That's not a natural thing. Right. <laughs> right. So, like coming out of college or just learning mail, you think I'd like the emails from Jeffrey from last week where we talked about Phil, <laughs> and then you'll be able to do that. Right. Right. Or you'd just be able to say, hey, set me up a meeting with Jeffrey next week at the place Carl and I had lunch uh, last week. Ah, so taking the specifics out of requests and letting it go back through your data and find that information for exactly. you. Exactly. But again, here's the gestalt, and this is the thing you want to get in focus. The tools, like here's the thing about AI, yep. right? A lot, most of AI. Most of AI is trying to understand you and your particular right. particulars in order to achieve an objective. Right. Now here's where Microsoft differs from our competitors. Our competitors try and understand you in order to get you to click on a button. Click on a button right. to get an advertisement, click on a button to buy something you don't need, right. click on a button to subvert some government that they want subverted. Okay? Right. Something like that. We are trying to understand you to achieve an objective. And what is that objective? That objective is to make your life easier. easier to make, empower you and your organization to achieve more. more. That's yeah. what I love about Microsoft's play. It's like our we, we our heads and our hearts are pure and in the right place. Now look, we're gonna monetize that. We think if we can make you more productive and have a better life and have more energy, that that's valuable to you. Right. But we'll be totally frank about that. Like totally like, hey, this is this yeah. is great stuff. So that's what I that's what I love about our play. Yeah, it's exci exciting exciting times with, with AI and you know, like I said, it's it's so interesting to see it evolve because I mean I'm not an office services guy. I mean I certainly use it, but like I said earlier, you know, some of these these AI focused features, I didn't even know I wanted them until I saw it, you know. So it's it's always exciting to see. So um, yeah, definitely it's great information. Uh, you know, I, I kinda wanna wrap up with a PowerShell question because sure. our audience is very excited and very into PowerShell and they'd be very upset with me if I didn't ask you what's new in PowerShell that you're really excited about? 
Boy, well, PowerShell version 7 is really the release. This is finally the release where it's the tool that can unify your entire organization, right? So in the past, it'd be the one tool to manage your Windows organization. Right. And then, well, we had PowerShell Core, and PowerShell Core was great on Linux, and by the way, we've been shocked. I, my joke was, well, we're doing PowerShell Core because we need it, we need to manage everything in the environment, blah, 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 right. blah. Right. I said, but don't be confused. We're, we're not confused. We're not, we don't view that the Linux community is gonna view us as liberators, like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out they sort of did. Yeah. They, 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 if you actually look at the usage of PowerShell Core, the vast amount of usage is actually Linux users <laughs> using it, which really quite surprised us. But also, uh, it also meant two things. One is they really loved it, but then also it wasn't as as uh, uh, it wasn't a complete replacement yet for Windows PowerShell. Right. <clears throat> PowerShell version seven really is. Okay. So all right. now all of a sudden that tool can be you know your Windows and your Linux teams can use it. We've done great performance work. We got parallel for each. Uh, <laughs> parallel for each. Uh, there's so many and and there's so many like little finishing notes. You know, right. um, in the past, we always like, oh, you know, just focus in on the big rocks and we don't have time for the finishing notes. Right. There's just been an incredible amount of work on the finishing notes. Right. And I think the, um, the, the thing that a lot of people don't know yet, I'm still kind of surprised is, at least the people I talk to, is that you can go contribute to PowerShell on GitHub. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got over 50%. It's been some time now that over 50% of the changes to PowerShell are coming from the community. So, you know, it's, it's fantastic. You know, you're like, ah, that error message sucks. Dude, <laughs> don't suffer in silence. One, you can file an issue. That's great. But it's even easier if you just say, hey, find that error message. Say it should say this. Right, right. And do a pull request and then boom. Now, all of a sudden, guess what? You're a PowerShell developer. Take pride. Tell yes. everybody, hey, PowerShell used to suck until I fixed it. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> It's awesome. Yeah. You can make it be the tool you want it to be. And you know, that's probably one of the most common things I hear is that error message sucks. It's you know, awful. And that's not specific to PowerShell, but just computing in general, right? So yeah. um, definitely, that's great to hear. And, and Oh, well, actually, if you think that, you should come uh, watch our PowerShell Unplugged session. Uh, Jason, you know, Jason Helmley. Yep. Superstar Jason. Yeah. Finally, we, we got him. We tried for a while. We finally hired him as a PM for PowerShell. And one of the first things he's been working in is cleaning up the error message. Nice. So we're going to be showing the concise view of error messages um, at uh, our unplugged session. And that's this afternoon, Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, people love this thing. Oh, it's always fun. I try to make it every year, so yeah. I'll, I'll be in there somewhere. So. Good, good, good. Well, anyway, Sorry, I appreciate And it's important to note, if you're here, um, it's, it's unfortunate this sequencing. They scheduled me and, and, and Jason against Mark Rosinovich. So it's unfortunate <laughs> you're going to have to choose. Um, the, the sessions are right across from one another. So Mark is in the very small auditorium and Jason <laughs> and I are in the large one. So that'll help you differentiate. Again, the popular ones get the larger auditorium. <laughs> Some of the lesser minor speakers get the smaller ones. So it's unfortunate you have to choose, but you know, just go to the big one. Go, ahead, go to the, the big session. The good yeah. one. That's right. The good one. The good one. Yeah. The good one. <laughs> All right. I'll try to make sure Mark sees this before the sessions start. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> That's good. Anyway, thanks for your time, Jeff. We really appreciate it. And uh, everyone watching, be sure to uh, keep looking down the page for additional Microsoft. And if I don't see it at, at, at this Ignite, I hope to see it at ne next Ignite. Uh, the next one. It really is a great conference. It is. It's fun. I try to come every year. Thank so, you. Again, thanks, Jeffrey. See ya.